Hello and yeah, welcome back to another devlog for my roguelike adventure game Neko Quest. Um, we did it. We've made a seamless world. Well, that's what we did last time. We've made the world generation um, sort of obey those rules of seamlessness. Um, so let me show you what we got. So here's this, you got this like ocean here, right? And then it's like a smooth-ish transition over here. And then, so here's here's our little like map overlay here. I guess I spoiled it a little too soon, but we got a different tile. So we got like ocean, desert, forest, mountain, um, what else, plains. And we smoothly transition between them. So now we're in the desert and then it's gonna smoothly, I think we're in the plains, it's kind of hard to see. And then there's the forest, it just kind of like starts. And yeah, and we're going through here. I guess the, the each like tile is very big. Each tile is 64 big. Um, but anyway, and you can see, so we're now at the, we're at the ocean seashore here. It's just kind of like smoothly, smoothly sloping around here. Um, that is what I worked on this time. Uh, I was thinking, let's, let's show off the code that we did to achieve this. Um, so let's start here. This is the overworld generator. We got these uh, sort of preset types and these define each of the big tiles so you can have a mountain uh, archetype or a forest or ocean or whatever and that just tells you how the overall archetype is going to generate and we don't have anything on top of this that'll come later so here's our generator and this is where all the magic happens is generate landform grid and so we have a cellular automata function and this is actually a separate implementation from our previous one with a couple more parameters um let me show you what we got here with height, number of generations, all that's the same. Neighbor value threshold. This will tell you what the neighbor needs to be to be considered a neighbor. So why do we want this? We can exclude neighbors that are too low value. So below eight doesn't even count as a neighbor. It's too low status for them. And so we can sort of more clearly define our shapes this way. And instead of having them sort of be uh, like mushy and muddled and fuzzy, this will make a clear sort of gradient as you see in in here, we have, you know, ocean, stuff around it, mountains on the edge. And let me actually show you, this is the um, sort of like prototype I used to test this um, like cellular automata implementation. So that was a bad one, but you can kind of see it's the same deal, just on a bigger scale. Generating this for the other, for this would be crazy. This already takes a while to load like this many tiles, but you can still see the concept you got ocean, desert, I guess beach, around it. Plains and forest are kind of mixed together and then mountains are the farthest away from the ocean. Um, so that's sort of the advantage of this of this implementation. And then the other things are the same neighbor growth thresh, how um, many neighbors, this is like, oh, actually this is different. It's not how many neighbors, it's what value the neighbors need to add up to to grow. And then shrink is the same thing, but how many the value has to be below this to shrink, so this is, again, different. Instead of just being one number, where it's above it'll grow, below it'll shrink, same, it does nothing. Just because there's so many more values, so the values aren't like 0 to 8. It's, I mean, anything, really. And this is like roughly around like 0 to 60-ish, but that depends on your input values, I believe. And generations, maybe? Because I think more generations just go up and up and up. And so you have to adjust, if you adjust this, you have to adjust these. I'll get to those in a second. Um, out of bounds, so if you get a tile on the edges, this is what it'll be. It'll start as an eight, which you'd think would be like eight neighbors. No, not quite. It's just, it's just eight. <laughs> it's just, just a number. Um, so if it were like zero, it'd be oceans. If it were a hundred, it'd be all mountains. So it's kind of, it, and it grows from here. So it's kind of in the middle anyway. So what we do with that, we get gen generate, and this is just generic count your neighbors and then do that over and over. And then you got your cellular automata, same as the other one. I think we talked about that before. Um, so we take the numbers for each tile and we designate the archetype for it. So below, well, it can't be below, so this should be equal. Zero is going to be an ocean. Um, next, you have a desert, so slightly more deserts generating around the oceans. And it goes up from there to generate our archetypes. So what we do with that, we pass that in. This is the chunk manager here. Um, this is inside the chunk when we generate it. So before, before we had these sort of just random or like specific presets and that was generating sort of the patchwork pattern that we were seeing before sort of quilted pattern where it's like you have the edge and it's like bang like a straight 
edge along and then you have, you know, Sneko Dungeon on one set side and, you know, Grassland on the other, just a straight line um, separating them. But now we have these presets. We made these presets uh, new for this, so they're not the old presets and these are slightly different. Oh, by the way, we just take the archetype that we made and then we set it. This could be a table, but this, this is fine for now. I don't know. So here's, here's what the presets look like. Um, they're just like any other presets, they contain layers, then they apply them at the end. Um, but these ones, and they'll get more complicated later, but for now, you generate what you need, in this case it's the ocean, and then the edge layers on top. What these do is make the smooth transitions, so they go out from your existing tile. So even if you're in an ocean tile preset, you might have a little bit of desert on one side and a little bit of mountain on the other. So you're kind of... So using the inside of the existing chunk to slope the other tiles. And so we can see this if we go back to, um, to our realm here. Let's generate a new one. Why not? Let's, let's see. Let's see how long it takes to. Um, of course, it's one in the middle of the ocean. So let's, let's get out of the ocean first. And we should be able to see that the chunks are very big. So this red marker here is where we're standing, what chunk we're in right now. So you see here, actually that's a, that's a really good um, border, but, uh oh, oh, I started fishing, oh no. <laughs> Let's stop, oh no, there's a fish monster. Oh gosh, this is getting out of hand. Um, but you can see, even though here's the sand tile, like the sand tile we're standing on now, but this is ocean. We're still on the ocean like grid. You see, if we move over, now we're in the sand, but that was ocean. So here, the, the border is actually like somewhere like... I'm gonna, I'm gonna get wrecked here. Yeah, the border is actually like somewhere right here. I fainted, oh no. Um, but there's still sand here, and that's because the sand is sort of sloping into the water. And then you'll see on the corner here, it'll just slope even more. Ooh, is that an ocean tile? Ooh, wait. There's an ocean there, that's kind of cool. You got a little like, and you, cause you can have rivers is the thing. You can have little rivers that stream out based on this implementation. Um, yeah, and so you can see we're still in the water, the ocean land, but it's sandy here. Um, yeah, that was a lot of words and explanation to just show that um, the edge layers generate within your tile, even if it's a different archetype from you. That's why they blend so easily. And we have like an order to these, so we have basically like ascending order, so mountain overwrites everything, forest overwrites everything, but except for mountain. Um, when we go down the list, ocean gets overwritten by everything else. And this isn't like hard and forest everywhere, I'm just doing it manually by the order of these. So these are all actually the opposite order because it's like painting a canvas. Desert will go first, plains on top of desert, and it'll additively overwrite each other. Um, you know, new things overwrite the old things. Um, I guess we can go over this. Here's the forest gen layer. Um, this kind of side tangent, just cool implementation. So what we do, so we have this density chart and then we use the old cellular automata here to generate the grid. And then based on the grid um, values, we use this is the, the uh, like chance of spawning a tree. So if you're in the densest part, pretty high chance. If you're in the less dense part, pretty low chance. So you have a gradient of trees out from the center of the cellular automata sort of um, like clusters there, I guess. Okay, so there's all the sort of setup out of the way and here is the sort of main course of today's devlog. Um, generate edge tiles. This is what was stopping me from working on this for however many, what, two, three months at this point? It really wasn't that hard. In the end of the day, it just, I just, I don't know. It was, it was a pain to implement. Um, so let's let's go through it. Overview. Um, let's go in here. So let's say we have our tile grid here. Beautiful MS Paint drawing of our of our tile grid. Yes, perfect re replica. And so let's say let's say this is our tile. This is where we're trying to like affect. I guess this is what we're doing the code for. But it'll happen for all the tiles, of course. So let's say we have a mountain tile up here. What do we want to have happen? We want the mountain sort of radius. Right now it's just this. All this is mountain area. All this is filled in, right? With mountain uh, tiles. But then we have this hard border here. 
What do we want to have happen? We want this border to go up and like that. So if you have the mountain, it'll look kind of like this, where it has a smooth slope going on instead of just a square. Turn the square into more of a circle. And the other thing we want to have happen, say we have another mountain tile here. We want this slope to go up on here to the edge, back down and act normally here. So smoothing out the edges, right? Not super simple. Um, let's go back. Let's go through our code and oh, and show you the uh, how this works. So we have some variables to set up and then we use them later. That's an obvious thing to say. Let me, let me explain what these are. So start, so each of these is a vector, four items, list, array, if you will. Um, and these are in directions, so up, down, left, right. So you will affect, you will use these based on which neighbor you're talking about. Um, and so these work, let's just talk about them. zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we go in the kind of up, down, left, right, circle from there. Um, that is, that is the, the basis for what we're doing here. So let's, oh gosh, let's go back. I keep hiding the wrong one. Get out of here, you. There we go. Um, so this, these are the start positions. So for our loop, actually I'll explain a couple of these and then I'll, I'll diagram it out after. Um, so yeah, we start either at zero, zero is the upper left at the right side for, or no wait, for the bottom left for the bottom direction, etc. This is where we start the loop. Sideways direction is the direction in which we loop. Um, not all these m may be necessary, like maybe these could be backwards. Uh, it's, it's complicated, I'll, I'll I don't know. <laughs> I'll do my best to explain. Yeah, this is the direction in which we loop. The lengths, how far the loop goes. So this allows for non-squarular, non-rectangular, uh, non, non things that are of different lengths. So if the grid is 12 by 800 tall, for a really tall map, you can do that. And maybe there will be a setting in the final game where you can do that. That would be pretty cool, maybe, we'll see. We have support for it, nonetheless. Um, and then the perpendicular directions are the sort of the normal. So if you take the the wall, which direction is towards the center of our tile? So let me explain these. So we got start positions. Um, say we are looping. Say there is a mountain here. So start position will be here if it's above us. And then let's say we get sideways directions. Okay, which direction? So it's to the right. So we are looping this direction to the right. Let's use a different color, actually. There we go. Looping to the right. And then next is the length. So the distance with which we need to loop. That'll be this far. And then we got some other stuff. Perpendicular directions, the direction in which to loop. So that would be Oh, what's a good color? Here we go. Down. This way. Away from that one. That would change. So, say there's a mountain instead. Um, over here. Start would be here. Direction would be this way. Sideways direction. Oh, what was our colors we used? Here we go. Sideways direction is this way. Distance is this far. And perpendicular would be in green. That way. So, we have it for up, down, left, right. We have it for all of our, um, all of our directions here. We deal with diagonals. We deal with diagonals uh, right here. So diag adds. So this is a weird thing. So the way we've implemented this is with a sign. We do math dot sign of everything, and so that's how we get the smooth looping. So diag adds will um, sort of offset the sign, I guess. Let's let's do another chart. Um, so let's say sign. Here's our hey. Hey, give me my, give me my brush back. So a sign will look like this, kind of. What the offsets will do is based on our grid. So let's say our grid, can you see that? Kinda. That's a bad grid. Okay, I'm sorry. We're, we're getting it, we're getting it down here. <laughs> so um, if we have a mountain, say here and here, 
we want these to loop like this, right? That's not how it normally happens. Normally, oh, we go like this. Or it's more like a ooh, little sine bell curve looking thing there. Um, so what we do is we cut the sine in half. That's with the offset 0 0.5 everywhere. That This is why you see it. We cut the sine in half. We say, okay, we're taking only this part of the sign or only this side. So I default goes up. So usually we use this for, for this part here, such that when we're generating this tile, get out of here, get out of the way. When we're generating this tile, this one already goes up. So this one, if you didn't do this offset, it would go up again also like this. We don't want that. We want to go down. So it's only taking this sort of section here and mapping that onto, onto this section. So it's going back down. I guess it's the inverse of what I'm saying, but it's flipped. So that's how <laughs> that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's the explanation of that. And so this is based on the neighbors, the diagonal neighbors. So above zero is above us. If there's somebody to the upper left, we add a 0.5 to take the right side of it. If there's also somebody to the upper right, we do the same thing again, and these accumulate. So this is for the case where say, let's say there's mountains, let's say there's three in a row, right here, three uh, of these little mountains in a row. What do we want to have happen? I want it to go up, up from here, and straight in the middle to connect them. So it's just a flat, there's no curve in the middle one. It's just a flat um, at the tallest value. So this is how we accomplish that, is both of these get added, and then later on we check if it is that case, subtract half pi to make sure, because um, let's just let's look at pi or a uh, sign here. Oh gosh, wait, what did I undo? Oh, I just undid it in OBS, wow. Um, so sign goes like up and down and up and down and up and down, right? Over and over and over. So when you add one, you're going from here to here, you're at zero. So when you subtract, you're going back to the highest point you need to be at for the whole distance here to be at that highest value. So um, that's for the diagad. And then finally, we got the sine offset. What does this do? Reverse the sine direction, right. So that is the same thing we were talking about before where, gosh, I'm losing control of my undo here. Um, so for this mountain, we want it to go up. That's normal. But if we wanted to go back down, we have to reverse the sign direction. This is how we calculate whether that should happen. Um, so we only do it if there's 0.5. That means we're sloping up or down. It's not a flat and it's not a slope. Not a slope in the middle. So if there's something above and to the upper right, then we do it that way. Um, yeah, because the upper left is already the case we want, so we don't need to set it. Then, finally, we've made it to the loop. Okay, so we start with I. This loops over four directions, up, down, left, right. The four, not, is it cardinal, ordinal? One of those. Um, if there's a neighbor there, we do stuff. If not, we don't even care. We need a neighbor in the, in the direction adjacent to our tile for it to work. Um, J is the next, because not I, is J. This loops over the length of our current direction. So the length of this side, again, we have support for multi-length, you know, longer sides of each uh, each side, of multi multiple uh, dimension options, I guess. Um, so for each tile, let's just go back. I, I know I'm going back and forth a lot, but just to really explain here, um, this is looping like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, over and over to tell you how far out to go in each direction, kind of a little less there, so it's a little, make your slope, you know? Then we deal with this sign value, the sign like expression from hell here. Um, I mean, this basically just uses our previous values, like, uh, I don't know if I really want to, I mean, it uses the sign. Um, J is the up to down or side, it's the sideways direction. Uh, for each tile, how this is determining how deep into our existing tile we need to go to make the curve. And that's why we're using a sign is because it'll be bigger in the middle, smaller on the edges. We obviously change that based on the slant if there's multiple tiles in a row. That's what this does. Um, Diag adds times this. 
can be bigger than one, so that's why we do the min, because we don't want it bigger than that. Because we then multiply by pi to make it go on the sine axis, so instead of one, two, three being weird numbers, it's at the peaks of each sine sort of uh, wavelength, I guess. We add the offset to make it go up or down, as explained earlier. The scale is how far in to the tile we go, so how much the sine sort of affects our slope. Some of these are really big, some of them are really, like ocean is kind of small, but the forest is like really big. And so then next we have noise, which is straight up random value to go forward or backward. And so for the forest, it's really big, so the trees can just be like standing out there. It's like the forest edge biome. Um, and then we have the legendary K, I, J, K. We go into sine plus noise. So how do you bend the tile for the sine? Random value forward or backward from that. And then we make a list. So this is in the map gen layer, um, like base, like base class here. This is where all the gen layers uh, inherit from. Uh, so like forest gen layer here, map gen layer, and then we use. Well, we don't use it in here. We use it in the other, <laughs> in the edge gen layers. We uh, get these tiles, and then we fill each one. I guess we can show. Um, do we have a gen here? Let's let's open one up here. Desert edge. So we get the edge tiles, and these are these values of the sine strength and then the randomness density, the randomness of uh, the edge tiles. Loop over all these, and then we can just fill them in. The cell auto is for um, cellular automata. This is for the color scheme. The colors to like wave back and forth. I might change this later. Anyway, that is how the edge blending works. And I guess we can I'm gonna show it off in the end here one last time let's see if we get a cool map oh loading time here we go so we get a smooth transition between this mountain here which is like sloping off to the edge i have fly on that's why i can go inside the uh, mountain there and then it slopes away oh so cool let's see the mountain in the forest let's see how that works and then naturally mountain stops forest starts goes back into this plains here and sort of you can see even though they're not densely populated they're they're sparse, and they, they sort of randomly sort of fade from each one. Now let's see this little U-shape here, let's see how this turns out. You got the mountain, and then curves in, and then curves back. Oh gosh, this is so cool. And then it curves. Oh, I wonder why this happened. Oh my gosh, this is so sick. Yeah, so that's our generation. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's exciting, okay? I think it's exciting. Yeah, so that's our, <laughs> that's our world generation. Uh, code done yeah we got this force inside the mountain like a little little cave area here oh this is so cool anyway that is all for this week's devlog we've finally done the world generation of course there's still a lot to do like um villages and roads and dungeons so that's the next big step um i don't know if there's anything really to show in here yeah it's just do dungeons do villages and roads <laughs> um and I have a slight idea for how to do that, but it might be a little later. We got the generation down now, so we can just add from here, right? So I guess the theory is those would be overlaid over this, but it's a problem for future NECA once again. Um, yeah, that's all we got done this time. That was that was the big hurdle. The hard part's over now. Everything from here is, is just smooth sailing. We add items, we add NPCs, enemies, and we just need to integrate what we already have into this new sort of uh, world generation, which should not be too bad. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, if you have any other ideas for cool things, anything, mechanics or, um, you know, enemy ideas, world generation, like archetypes, maybe you want. If you saw some of them that were commented out, like a swamp or like an arctic, what would those biomes have? Like, or what would be a cool biome that you would suggest? What would it have? Why should we have it in the game? Um, yeah, I think at some point, well, I'll cut myself off, but at some point we could have like all sorts of biomes and you could choose at the start which ones would be, uh, you know, your archetype, your world archetype. So many possibilities, but we're, we're tackling our problems one at a time. So anyway, as always, all comments, all suggestions, anything, any thoughts you got, love to hear it. And yeah, that's all we got. I'll see you next time. Bye now.